Well, hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. Hey, we are going through the book of Numbers right now, and today we're actually talking about a passage. It'll be today and tomorrow. We're talking about this passage dealing with Zelophiad's daughters, okay? And so I want to read it. It's only 11 verses long. Um, but there's several lessons we can learn from this, uh, and there's going to be a lesson each day uh, that we can learn uh, from this passage here. And a lot of times, this is one of those stories you kind of skip over, and you're like, oh, yeah, it's just another passage here. But uh, there's a lot of, you can learn a whole lot from this Bible. In fact, every day you should be learning something uh, about our God. So anyway, this is uh, taken today from Numbers 27, verses 1 through 11. And this is dealing with Zelophiad's daughters, okay? Keep in mind, I'm going to make a mess of some of these names here. And wait till you hear the names of these uh, five daughters. You're going to be like, whoa, hold on. All right, here it goes. Uh, verse 1. The daughters of Zelophiad, son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh, belong to the clans of Manasseh, son of Joseph. The names of the daughters were... Uh, okay, so these are the five daughters, and um, we're going to be grandparents here in a little bit. And I've been trying to give um, suggestions uh, to uh, my son and daughter-in-law of good names, and uh, maybe you can help me here. Maybe these are good names uh, for the for the grandchild. Um, they were the names of the daughters were Mahela, hmm, okay, Noah, okay. You might get that mixed up with Noah and the Ark. Hogla, probably not the best name, Milka, and Terza. Okay, kind of like Ter Terzan, but Terza. Okay, those are the five women that we're talking about here today. They came forward and stood before Moses, Eleazar the priest, and the leaders in the whole assembly at the entrance to the tent of meeting, and said, Our father died in the wilderness. He was not among Korah's followers who banded together against the Lord. But he died for our sins, uh, our, for, for his own sin, and left no sons. Why should our father's name disappear from the clan? Because he had no son. Give us his property among our father's relatives. Okay, so this is a bold thing these women are doing here to come before the whole, uh, the leadership, really, with their request. Verse 5, So Moses brought their case before the Lord, and the Lord said to him, what Zelophiad's daughters are saying is right. You must certainly give them the property as an inheritance among the father's relatives and give their father's inheritance to them. Say to the Israelites, if a man dies and leaves no son, give his inheritance to his daughter. If he has no daughter, give his inheritance to his brothers. If he has no brothers, give his inheritance to his father's brothers. If his father has no brothers, give his inheritance to the nearest relative in his clan that he may possess it. This is to have the force of law for the Israelites, as the Lord commanded Moses. Okay, several things we can learn from this. The first thing I want you to, uh, that we're going to look at today is in verse 5. It says, so Moses brought their case before the Lord. Okay, that's it. Um, it we need to take it to the Lord. This was a difficult case for Moses. Okay, Moses didn't have all the answers. And uh, keep in mind, this was a patriarchal society uh, where men um, kind of ruled everything, and women were not treated well. And we're going to get into that a whole lot tomorrow. Um, that the women were not treated well and were treated almost like cattle uh, and stuff. Uh, so uh, the women weren't, weren't held in the high regard that they are today. Um, and so Moses is like, oh, unsure what to do. He takes it to the Lord, okay? You're going to find out later that, uh, and he did this several other times, you're going to find out later, as we're going through the Bible here, um, well, it, actually in this chapter here, he's going to make Joshua his new, um, uh, his, really his protege, and he's going to, you know, enable him, ordain him really to be the, the next leader. You're going to find out in one instance he just goes ahead and makes the decision without really consulting the Lord. It, it does, never says he consulted the Lord. And that decision just turned, uh, turned out to be a real disaster uh, for Joshua. Um, and so you'll have to listen to all our episodes to get to that. But I wanted to focus today on how Moses, you know, he, he gave it right to God. And, and like 
uh, what's he to lose? I mean, he can, um, it, you know, it, God called him to lead the people. Um, and so that's what he's doing. And, but we got to trust God and allow God to work in us to lead those people. And that's what Moses did. He was like, I don't know what to do. So uh, he turned it over to God. God, I, I, I'm trusting in you to, and what to do in this situation. And that's what he did. And, and God spoke uh, directly to Moses about that um, and, and, and answered him. So whenever you get into a situation, even before you get into that situation, it's, it's best to turn it over to God. You're going to get into situations every day. And it's best to turn it over to God. Even when I am going, I'm going to uh, these different jobs that I'm doing. I pray on the way there, Lord, uh, I pray that this would be uh, honor you. And a lot of times I'm praying, Lord, I, I pray that I'd, I'd make some money on this job and that it would go well for me. But a lot of times I'm praying, Lord, may this benefit the customer. Um, not myself necessarily all the time, but um, help me to find a way that it benefits the customer. And it turns out sometimes I'm doing something that I'm not making as much money as I could be. But the customer is really benefited from that situation because of what what we're doing or, or whatever. So um, that's what I'm looking to do is uh, and, and give it to God and let God's will be done in that situation. So I invite you in the situations you go through, invite God into that situation and let his will be done. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm a regular dude walking in the word and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through the book of Numbers. Lord's blessing, I'll see you then.